How's it going guys? Today, just gonna be doing something nice and fun. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install your one inch lift spaces from Aerogenics in the front of your Honda CRV. Now this guide is specifically for the first generation, so I'm talking 1996 to 2001 model with the chassis code RD1 through to RD3. Now the reason I'm making this guide is because there's a couple of things that can go wrong if you don't know what you're looking for. Thankfully, there's a nice little trick for one of them and the other you just need to be a little bit more mindful when you're wrenching away. Okay, so just quickly, you need a socket kit. You need 12 mil, 14 mil and 17 millimeter. Um, you'll need an extension piece. You don't need the longest extension you can get. You just want one that'll let you get to those little bit tighter spots that you can't quite move your hand around. You're gonna want a hammer if you don't have a ball joint separator because for the upper camber arm, there's a ball joint that you need to separate from this upper arm here. So I'll show you a neat little trick with a hammer when we get to that. Now, you're also going to want zip ties for that part of the video and I'll go into why when we get to it. Now, there is a bolt at the bottom of the strut assembly that requires two um, wrenches. So you can either use a breaker and your socket kit or an adjustable wrench and your socket kit. I believe it's a 17 millimeter. So I'm gonna be using my breaker in the socket kit, but I have this here just for demonstration purposes. Now, this, this is a special little goodie because I need to replace something. I'll show you that when it comes to it. I'm actually really excited about that. Now, the last thing you need is you just need a nice high jack so you can get the front up high enough, get your wheels off the ground. If you're running something like 235s or lift springs in there as well, you're definitely gonna want a bigger jack or maybe even a wood chock. You're gonna need jack stands and you will most likely want a low profile jack because at a certain point when you're reassembling the strut assembly to the fork, you will need to jack up the hub. So keep that in mind, you may want a second jack. Okay, just before we get started, we want to crack the nut so when we do lift up the car, we can still get the wheel off. So let's just crack that. Just that. Now that we've got that jacked up, we want to place the jack stands underneath. Once you've got the nuts off, you just want to take the wheel and you want to put it under the car. So that way, if anything drops, you've got another point of safety when you're under the car so you don't get crushed. All right, now that that's done, we've just double checked that this jack stand here is in the right position. Okay, now that we've got the wheel off, we're going to remove the sway bar first. So you're going to want to get your socket kit and your 12 millimeter and probably an extension piece because it is just a little bit annoying getting in there with the lower control arm in the way. So I'm gonna get my trusty little GoPro here and hope it works this time around. Um, I'm just gonna pop that down here. Okay, now all we gotta do is we just gotta loosen these bolts just like that. Do it a little bit at a time just so it comes down nice and evenly. All right, that's two. Now, as you can see, that sway bar hasn't actually come down a whole lot at all. That's because currently we're maxing out at this ball joint here. Um, so yeah, we've got the sway bar out. Now we're moving on to the ball joint on the up control arm and the camber arm. Now, a good little tip because you're gonna be losing bolts otherwise, just take your bolts, put them in your socket kit case and do not forget about them because you'll kick them around and it'll be a nightmare. Okay, so we're coming at this castle nut now here. So that's to remove this ball join from this upper arm and so we can drop the rest of the assembly a bit lower. Now, before we do that, I will show you a little trick so that you don't pop your axle out. Now, it's super simple and it'll save you so much time. Myself, Silver RD1 had this happen and a few other people have had this happen where when you drop this down without having it zip tied to this brake line here, It'll drop down too far and this axle will pop out. You can actually see my boot is torn here. There's a little bearing in here. Now that bearing, there's three of them on a spindle. Now when that pops out, that means that you basically have to pull that whole boot off and fiddle with these greasy bearings trying to pop them back in. You'll probably have to remove your entire axle if that happens. Um, so just be mindful. Do not let that happen and do this little trick. So all you need is um, one or two big uh, zip ties. I've got three because these aren't particularly um, long. Uh, now, you just want to get them 
attach to your brake line here, around this arm. You don't want it to be too tight, you want there to be a little bit of movement still happening here, but you do not want it to come out past probably about this length. Now, I know I'm making a big deal of this, but honestly, the one time I didn't use these zip ties, my axle popped out and I was fighting with it for two days. I had to buy an axle nut, I had to borrow a mate's rattle gun, um, I broke my breaker bar, I broke a lot of shit, so just be mindful. Do not forget to zip tie this. Okay, now that you've got that zip tied, we're just gonna be coming at this castle nut here. Now this is a 17 millimeter. There are two ways that we can do this. If you wanna be safe, we've obviously already got the zip tied. Um, now you can put the jack stand underneath the lower control arm as well if you want, or if you have a low profile jack, you can put that underneath so you can more carefully control it and lower it as you need to. Since we've got that zip tied and that jack in place, we can now address this ball joint. So the first thing we want to do is we want to loosen that nut, um, that castle nut. Now we don't want to take it all the way off and I'll show you why in a moment. We just want to get it flush with the bottom of that stud. Um, now if you have issues with that stud rotating with the um, nut as you try and ratchet it, um, just kind of free spin your hand like very quickly like this. Um, it just needs to grip on that thread and doing that will really help it do it. If you have a rattle gun too, that'll help a lot, but I don't, so. What we need to do, the reason we need this hammer is because we need to separate this ball joint from this arm. So what we're gonna do is there's this little knuckle on the side here. We're gonna get our hammer and we're just gonna give it a nice tap. Now I got that first go because I've done this a few times already. It might take a few hits. Don't be afraid to give it a good knock in. Normally it takes me about six or seven. Once you've done that, that'll separate the ball joint from this upper arm. Um, again, make sure you've got the zip tie on by this point because this is where it will be necessary. So now we're just going to, so I'm just gonna take this out. Jeez, maybe I should've used the thing. Now you can see immediately this whole assembly has just moved. So I'm gonna tighten this more. This is why you need to be careful because this can just yank you can see that the axle moves with this. So this can just yank that axle out if you don't have this on, um, especially with the sway bar removed. Okay, before we go any further, I'm just gonna lower this down, probably yeah, that there. This is now just, you can see again, so clearly this is so close to popping out. That zip tie is just perfectly limiting it. Now the next stage is we're gonna be coming down at this bolt here. There's a nut on one side and a bolt on the other. So this is where you're gonna use your breaker on one side or your adjustable wrench. Um, it's a 17 mil and you're gonna be using uh, your socket kit on the other side. Now let's just get that on, loosen it up. Now because I'm lifted, I have to do all this before um, removing this bolt because otherwise there's too much tension. Um, I would just recommend doing it the same. You don't have to if you don't have a space already bolted up, but you know you know this process works. So, okay, so now I've got that nut off. This bolt is acting as a pin for this strut assembly. Um, we're gonna unbolt it in the engine bay now. Okay, so for these, we're just gonna want a 14 mil and an extension bit just to raise above everything. Let's come over here, actually. All right, so you can see that's loosened up nicely. Obviously, we can now see that there's not much tension on uh, these nuts holding it in with the rest of the assembly drop, so that's good news. Um, so this is just being held in by this pin here now. There's a few ways you can do it. Just rotate it and put some pressure on the other side and it'll just slowly press out. If you don't have any spaces at all, bolted up this should just come out um, because your geometry is exactly the same as stock it should just be a simple unbolt and remove the pin mine isn't so yeah okay so we've gotten that bolt out now from the bottom of the fork so what we're gonna do we're gonna come into the engine bay up here we're gonna remove these two nuts that are holding it in you're gonna want your wrench again you're gonna want your 14 mil and your extension bit again you're gonna want to come one hand into the top to loosen, and one hand on that strut so when it drops, it doesn't break anything. Where is it? There we go. All right. And now, 
that's our strut disassembled. So when we pull this out, we just want to pull that nice and easy off this lower control arm. It'll get caught a little bit, so just got to wiggle it. And I said nice and easy. All right, so now you just got to yank this arm out. We're halfway there. We've now removed our strut assembly from the Honda CRV. Now, I know what you're thinking. Finally, it's time to get that nice new blingy one inch spacer from Aerogenics on top. Hold your horses, not quite yet. So there is one last step you need to do. Now, I'm just gonna go in and show you. The factory stud on the top hat is offset by about an inch on the Aerogenics spacer. Now, what you need to do is you need to remove that top hat. So you're gonna need some spring compressors. I've already got a one and a half inch lift spring in here and I don't have spring compressors, so I can't actually show you this, but I will tell you what to do and how to do it. Um, so basically, compress your springs down so they're not gonna kill anyone when you take the top hat off. You wanna loosen the top hat, and you can either remove it completely or you can just rotate it if you can. So you need to rotate this, essentially, an inch clockwise, so that when you bolt it up, this is actually quite important, you'll see at the bottom with the fork, there's actually this little divot. So I've already loosened this. I'll go into that more in a moment. Now, the reason for that is if it's not in this little divot, you can see that if it loosens too much, it can rotate. Now, if you don't rotate that top hat, it'll be sitting more around here and you're just gonna have it grinding along there. So that's something to be aware of. Once you've finished rotating it, retighten the top hat down. You can bolt your spacer down, flip this over, and you can now unbolt this. So you're probably thinking by now, mine looks nothing like this. This is just a high tensile bolt, a nut and a washer on either side. Now the reason for that is, this is the bolt that it originally had. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but this is a very stripped bolt. Now, normally that is the bolt that would sit here. It's quite short, it doesn't have a whole lot of thread, and this fork is old and rusty. You can even see just on the inside there, there's a bit of rust. Now, while I was off road, this stripped itself completely and my entire fork basically slid down here. You can even see the scratch marks where it's happened. So this is basically just stripped, ripped out of the thread. This is loosened up. This whole fork is just shot down. It's nearly smashed into my CV there. If you think your bolt looks rusty or damaged or stripped, toss it. I'm just using a high tensile bolt. It's a grade 8.8. .8. Um, I want to replace it with a grade 10 because this is a grade 10 bolt um, and I'm just using a nut and washer. Honestly, it's more secure in my opinion because of that nut. It is much tighter held on there um, and there's a whole lot more thread for it to have to rip out. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that because that um, is something important that I think I overlooked when I originally did my lift and uh, it cost me. So now that you've loosened that, you can remove your fork, you can loosen it more if you need to. I don't really think I need to. So now that that's removed, you've got your spacer on top. We can actually move on to the next step and we're getting quite close to finished here. So I'm going to be removing these. That's what my little goodies over here are. Uh, so it's an adjustable canvas solution from the front. Um, so basically pulling these existing arms out and replacing it with these new ones. I've just finished bolting in the new hard race upper camber arms. The reason I'm replacing them, just make sure you can See that in focus? Yep. These are my bushings up the top. I could basically push that out with my thumb. So they desperately needed to go. So I've got the new ones in there and we can finish the installation. Okay, so the process from here, first things first, we're gonna grab our strut. We're gonna make sure we have one of our nuts or both of them in hand, ideally. We've already rotated our top hat. So now all we're gonna do is we want that fork still separated from the strut. We want to line the strut up with the bolt holes and then we just want to hold it there. One bolt in from the top, uh, one nut on from the top, sorry, just to hold it in there. We don't want to tighten it down. We still need some movement in here. I'll explain why in a moment. So just going to get that second nut in. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we're going to be taking our fork. We're going to be bolting that back the lower control arm here. We're gonna make sure that the CV axle is inside the fork here. So we're gonna slide that back over. Once it's on there, we're gonna get the 
big long pin style bolt, popping this back through the fork where it was before, through that bushing down here. So as you can see, it's not lined up fully. So you're gonna get that there. This is hard to do with one hand. Okay, now that that's through, you can start to see that bolt coming through. You just wanna get that on there. And we're not gonna tighten that up yet. We still want that to be free moving, this to be free moving. And this is why. So you wanna pull that strut, so that lip is going into there nicely. Now, this is where the zip ties, again, come in handy. So, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be using our boot or shoe to press these together. You want the bottom of your boot on the fork and the rest of it against the strut. So you just want a nice flat surface area. I'm just gonna pop you down here so you can see, pressing that together like that is moving the whole assembly down, putting some tension on those zip ties on everything else. So get our boot, grab the top of the engine bay and press. Get our boot, grab the top of the engine bay and press. See how easy that was? It was just about lowering that down, getting it at the right angle. Pressing it with your boot, now that it's together, um, we can start tapping it back to straight. Kind of stuff. So you can see the strut is definitely in there. So when we start jacking it up, we're going to be damaging the strut, damaging the edges, damaging the fork. Now you can see, again, that is so close to popping out, but because of this zip tie, that hasn't happened and we're still in the clear here. Okay, so I'm going to just jack this up. I'm just on this bottom bit of the lower control arm here. It's not a huge surface area, so just be careful as you jack it up. Now the reason for this is we're just jacking this up until it gets to that lip there. And not an inch further. So now we're just gonna tighten this bolt up here um, and then we can proceed with the rest. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. Tighten this down so that lip isn't gonna go anywhere. Now that we've got that nice and tight, we're just coming into the engine bay. We're just gonna tighten these down now. You can actually see, I've had to remove my battery here, um, the entire battery tray, dislodged my fuse box, just to get at this one bolt to replace my um, upper control arm. So that's uh, that's just right hand drive problems for you. All right, that's good enough for now. They're tight, they're in there, it's not moving. All right, so now we're gonna come back up, we're gonna do this sway bar. Um, we're gonna get this jack once more, we're just gonna go under the lower control arm instead of the um, knuckle here this time jack it up so that the bolts are quite short so we're going to jack up that lower control arm so they reach tighten them now as you can see this is coming up quite nicely so i'm going to do a little bit more now the little shackle that holds them in place and clamps it down has a little bit of flex to it so just push to where you need to get it get that first bolt in and then don't tighten it all the way otherwise you're not going to get that second one in Tighten them down all the way. <sighs> okay, so now our sway bar is reattached. We're at the final stages of bolting it all back together. We can safely remove this zip tie now, remove this castle nut, line this back on, and put the castle nut on. So we're gonna lower this arm back down. Okay, so I lightly touched on this earlier, but essentially with the final two bolts that we've got to tighten down, the castle nut here and the bolt with the pin for the fork at the bottom here, the, the one at the bottom of the fork is in a bushing, so you need to tighten that on the load. And same with this castle nut on the uh, ball joint here. They have to be tightened under load. Now, I'm not gonna be able to reach this um, once I get my wheel back on. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to tighten it before I preload it. So you'll see that in a moment. Okay, so now that we've got the castle nut attached, we haven't, we haven't fully loaded it down, we haven't fully tightened it down. We just gotta come in, we're gonna do this, um, this one at the bottom of the fork here, just this, this nut here. So we're just gonna get that on there, ready to be fully tightened down. That nut is now on there nicely, it's not too tight. So we're just gonna jack up the lower control arm once more, put some pressure so that when we're tightening this, we are tightening it under load. So I'm just gonna get my uh, low profile jack under the arm here, under the lower control arm here again. Tighten down this castle nut now that it's properly under load. Get that nice and tight. 
Now, there it is. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want to over tighten it. Okay, so now that we've got the castle nut for the upper camber arm tightened under load, we're just going to raise it back up, put the tire on, drop it back down and tighten that last nut. All right, so we're basically done. I'm just going to come in with this 17 mil and retighten this now that it's under load on that bushing. So you don't want to go too far with it. Um, just get it on nice and snug. Now that it's tightened under load, that's all good. We can do the very last step of the install. All right, and last things last, we're just gonna come back in and we're just gonna re-tighten those down. It'll be a little bit looser now. And there you have it, guys. That's everything you need to know to install your one-inch lift spacer from Aerogenics in the front of your Honda CRV. Now, if you have any other questions, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram or YouTube. I'll try and get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, I hope this video helped you. I sure would have loved to have a guide like this when I did mine for the first time. So if this video helped, give it a thumbs up. Let me know how it helped. If it didn't, do the same but in reverse. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. My dog's off playing by himself with a ball. Bring me the ball! Bring it here! Come on! Atta boy! Hey! Give me that ball! There you go. This is what I'm dealing with. You're a little speedy, are ya? You gotta fucking listen to me.